Mrs. Tucker. Um, if I may, Mr. McDonald, would you step forward and provide oral testimony uh, as well? If you would both, uh, uh, I will go with the first. Uh, you, Mrs. Am I saying that correctly? Stibbett? Yes. yes I sir. Okay, I wanted to make sure I am. Um, Mrs. Stibbett, if you would go first, followed by uh, uh, Mr. McDonald, that you each have. Uh, three minutes, you're testifying for and Mr. McDonald uh, against the nomination of Mrs. Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senators. It's a pleasure to be here today to testify in support of the uh, uh, confirmation and appoint the appointment and confirmation of Sarah Martinez. Name Stibbett. who you represent first, my please, for the record. Is, my name is Veronica Vargas Divent. Uh, I'm Chancellor of WG Texas, but I'm testifying today in my individual capacity. I've known of Sarah Martinez Tucker for many years. Uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, she has a very good reputation um, within the uh, education and uh, private sector for her commitment to educational access, accountability, and results. Uh, I've known of her service to her alma mater, her state, and her country for some time. I've come to know her personally over the last six years in my capacity when I was at the University of Texas at Austin. I started a leadership academy there and Sarah Martinez Tucker was asked to uh, serve as the chair of the advisory board for that program. And I can tell you that uh, working with Sarah Martinez Tucker required me to up my game. Her focus on results and accountability, her analytical approach to solving problems, uh, her ability to work with others uh, to face challenges and develop solutions required that uh, my staff and I uh, work very hard to meet those expectations. That meant that everything we prepared, everything we did, uh, the budgets we submitted had to be impeccable, and as a result, the program was better for her oversight and her involvement. So it is without reservation that I can recommend her uh, to this committee and to the full Senate for confirmation. I am a, a supporter, obviously, but I can speak from experience about her leadership style uh, about the way she approaches her responsibilities and can say without reservation that she exemplifies the integrity that we would want all public servants to approach their jobs with. Um, and so with that, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Any members, any questions of the witness? Thank you, Mrs. Stimmett, uh, you're dismissed. Thank you, Bailey. Ms. McDonald, state your name for the record in three minutes. Yes, uh, my, thank you, Senators, for uh, allowing me to testify. My name is Tony McDonald. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm here testifying on my own behalf uh, as an alumni of UT Law School, a UT undergraduate. Um, and I'm testifying uh, against the nomination of Ms. Tucker. Uh, when I began to research her background, uh, when the name was put forward, uh, there were some troubling uh, some troubling elements, and that's what I came here to testify on, uh, related to Common Core, related uh, to what I later learned, uh, her service with the National Center on Education and the Economy, and a gentleman by the name of Mark Tucker, who has some rather radical ideas about the nationalization of the public, edu uh, our public education system and some radical changes for our public education system. Uh, but I, I feel like that's been somewhat addressed, and, and then you're at least uh, able to follow up and be aware of that. Uh, what I wanted to switch gears slightly on and, and focus on was one comment that Ms. Tucker made about um, private supplements to public uh, employees. Um, you know, she said transparency is key. This is a good thing, but transparency is key. Well, one of the problems that we saw with the forgivable loan program at UT Law uh, was that the money was coming from the UT Law Foundation. And from my study of the Office of Attorney General's report, you can see a pattern of behavior to try to create separation between the foundation and the law school so that the foundation would not be subject to all of the open records uh, laws that apply to this institution that apply to the law school. And uh, I believe, and I, I've been made aware of a ruling from the Attorney General uh, that the Law School Foundation was not subject to uh, the Public Information Act. And so uh, I just wanted to, to focus on that issue. Transparency is key. That's true, um, but what we need out of these uh, nominees if they become regents is an ability to be aggressive in going after um, 
the structures that would prevent uh, the public and elected officials from knowing what actually is going on. Um, so I would, I would urge you uh, great caution and, uh, and uh, serious study of these nominees that they're going to be capable of doing the job that they need to do to clean up what's happened. With that, I have a big question. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Members, questions of Mr. McDonald? Uh, so lots of questions. The next two witnesses, um, uh, from, uh, looks like a Vance McMahon, am I saying that correctly? Yes, sir. Okay. Vance uh, is testifying for uh, Ms. Tucker, and then uh, uh, testifying, providing oral testimony, uh, uh, Marilyn uh, Gertenslager. Marilyn, there you go. Would you step forward, please? And each have three minutes. And uh, Vance, we will uh, start with you. If you would state your name for the record uh, and, uh, and who you represent, uh, you have three minutes. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate this opportunity to testify, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, my name is Vance McMahon, uh, attorney and uh, consultant in town. I'm here in my private capacity in support of Sarah Martinez Tucker. I've worked with Secretary Tucker at the actual level on the Commission on the Future of Higher Education. And I'm familiar and work with her in, in her work on the national, two national nonprofits. Um, Secretary Tucker's commitment to education, her intelligence, and her personal integrity are evident by her experience, background, and trust that others have placed in her um, throughout her career. I would just like to speak briefly about another quality, her key insight in education that will benefit the state and the UT Board of Regents as it deals with all the education challenges that we face in Texas. If our state's to reach younger Abbott's goal of being number one in education, it will have to do a better job of graduating more students from low-income and underserved backgrounds. You know, our state's growth is a blessing, but it's also a challenge. With the highest percentage of minority students in the country, and Hispanics accounting for 90% of the student population growth over the next 20 years, we have to do, as Senator Taylor noted, a much better job of raising attainment levels, graduation levels across the board. We have to close ethnic and income-based achievement gaps, and we have to get more students into high-demand, high-tech fields. Sarah has unique insight into all these challenges through experience as CEO of the Hispanic Scholarship Fund and NIMSI and a board member of Subiendo. She's gained a deep understanding of and, and helped solve for the financial, cultural, and academic problems and barriers that students and families face. She's worked to get more students access to rigorous courses in the high demand fields that are so essential to our future, like math, science, and engineering. She's made sure these students are taught by qualified STEM teachers. She served at the highest levels of policymaking and pushed to make higher education more affordable, accessible, and accountable. Her work on corporate boards will bring insight into ways to make the UT system more efficient and responsive to the skills valued by employers and ensure that our taxpayers get the return on investment that they deserve. In the age when so many people are discouraged from serving the government, it's a credit to my state, government, Abbott, and the UT Board of Regents that we can attract someone as qualified as Sarah Martinez Tucker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMahon. Thank you. Mr. Gordon Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Mary Lynn Gersten. I'm here for myself and also as the Vice President of Texas Eagle Forum. I'm an unpaid, self-funded volunteer. I'm here today to oppose the nomination of Mrs. Sarah Martinez Tucker. My concerns center around the fact that Mrs. Tucker is a strong proponent of the highly controversial Federal Common Core Education Standards. If Mrs. Tucker were confirmed as a regent, she would stand in a position to wield great influence over teacher training. Note that there are 2,188 undergraduates and 1,276 graduate students currently enrolled in the College of Education at the University of Texas. As an example of Mrs. Tucker's promotion of the Common Core Standards was published, or an example was published in her February 28, 2014 U.S. News and World Report article titled, quote, It's Time to Change the Common Core Debate, end quote. In the article, Mrs. Mark Tucker stated that, quote, we should move the discussion of how Common 
Court will be implemented, not if Common Court should be implemented, end quote. Members, in January 2010, then-Governor Rick Perry rejected federal rates of the top funds that would require implementing the Common Court standards in Texas. Last legislative session, Texas passed House Bill 462. The stated intent of the bill was to prohibit the, quote, outright adoption of national common core standards, end quote. Note that during the interim, then-Senator Dan Patrick asked for an attorney general's opinion on whether school districts using the common core state standards initiative, quote, in any way to teach state standards violate the law, end quote. Then Attorney General Greg Abbott issued opinion number GA 1067 in which he stated in his summary, quote, Texas school districts are required to provide instruction with essential knowledge and skills at appropriate grade levels and pursuant to subsection 28.002B3 of the Education Code, they may not use the Common Core State Standards Initiative to comply with this requirement, end quote. With this in mind, I would like to read another quote from Mrs. Tucker's U.S. News and World Report article in which she stated that, quote, we need to provide adequate training and ongoing mentorship opportunities for teachers, end quote. Members in a state where the governor and the legislature and the people have rejected the federal Common Core standards, I think it unwise to confirm anyone who wants to implement Common Core as well as train teachers on Common Core. My question after hearing Mrs. Tucker's testimony and the committee's questioning today would be this. Has she issued a written public statement or article that contradicts what she wrote in the U.S. News and World Report article? In conclusion, I respectfully request that you reject the nomination of Mrs. Tucker. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you. Both witnesses are, are dismissed. Um, I do have one uh, public testimony, which is to register uh, against but not provide uh, testimony uh, in regards to uh, Mrs. Tucker's nomination and Michael Sullivan. If you would include that in the record, then Madam Clerk. Uh, any additional testimony on, for, or against the nomination of Sarah Tucker for member of the Board of Regents of the University Test of System? Uh, seeing and hearing none, public testimony is closed. Members, what I would like to do is take a five-minute operational pause so that your chairman uh, can run out the door here real quick, if I may. Um, uh, so, uh, operational pause would mean that in, 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 no, 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 no. I was going to say that's, no, that's a military term. I need to put it in legislative language term, but we will stand at ease for five minutes. Um, I know you're watching me over there, so 